Happy New Year! To ring in 2023, we thought we'd have some fun and take a look at some of Hi-Fi and Home Theater's most influential loudspeakers. And don't worry, your chance to tell me how I'm wrong is coming up. But for now, let's get into my list of the top 10 most game-changing speakers of all time. Yeah. Bang & Olufsen Bio Lab 5. Bang & Olufsen has always pushed the boundaries of design and technology, and the Biolab 5 was game-changing in more ways than one. It was the first b and speaker to use acoustic lens technology. This is where sound is more evenly dispersed over a wider area through the use of reflective surfaces above the mid-range driver and tweeter, which cut down on room interactions. And taking the concept of one's room into even greater consideration, the 5 also featured automatic in-speaker bass EQ or adaptive bass control. Similar to what you're going to find in a lot of products today, especially in home theater, the 5 was among the first, if not the first, to employ it inside a speaker. ABC allowed the 5 to effectively tune its bass performance to the room, regardless of placement. This tech would continue to be developed along with a host of other DSP type of innovations, and they can all be found in pretty much all b speakers today. Meridian M1 Speaker while not the first powered speaker, that distinction, I believe, goes to the Altec Lansing 98468A. In the late 70s, Meridian's M1 became the first consumer-oriented loudspeaker to feature self-amplification. The active M1 would go on to largely define the brand's entire loudspeaker identity. Now, the Meridian sort of cheated a bit in that the M1, while powered, didn't really house the amplifier section inside the cabinet. Instead, the amp, which was removable for service, rested in a kind of cubbyhole of sorts that was simply part of the speaker's cabinet. While powered speakers or active loudspeakers have no doubt come a long way from the early days of the M1, the M1, along with the Altec Lansing, were turning points in loudspeaker history because it showed listeners what was possible in terms of system building and sound quality when you thought outside the box. Bose 901. Say what you want about Bose, but the iconic 901 may be their most beloved speaker, at least among audiophiles. The 901 was the first speaker to harness Bose trademark direct reflecting technology, where through unique cabinet design and nine individual drivers per speaker, sound was directed and thus reflected around the room and off of surfaces like walls, floors, and ceiling in a very purposeful way to create a larger, more enveloping sound field. According to Bose, only 11% of the signal was being directed at the listener, with the remaining 89% arriving by reflection. Few speakers do this today, but there is no denying how effective the 901's design was at recreating the sensation of the recorded space. Never mind the fact that the 901s also had an active equalizer, allowing listeners to tailor the sound to their liking. Imagine that. Bose Acoustamass System. While I'm confident some dyed-in-the-wool audiophiles would love to forget the time period ever happened, the late 80s to early 90s introduced the idea of a lifestyle-oriented loudspeaker that previously just didn't exist. Bose was also among the first to use the small speaker subwoofer combo as an option for shrinking a speaker's physical footprint within a room. The Acoustamass no doubt opened the door for more people to enjoy music and then later movies at home without resorting to speakers that had to just dominate your living space. I know my first ever home theater experience actually came at the hands of a 5.1 Acoustamass setup, and it was just so impactful. Well, we're here today, aren't we? Bowers and Wilkins, 801. Iconic in many ways, the 801 would not only come to define Bowers and Wilkins' entire visual design identity for like the next 40 years or so, but also establish the brand's sonic signature. The 801 proved to be so popular, the 800 series remains in production to this very day. Designed with almost zero consideration for anything but maximum sonic performance, the 801 was a large, imposing loudspeaker that featured two separate and sealed cabinets, one for the large 10.5-inch woofer and the other for the mid-range in tweeter. This design cut down on resonances in a way that no box speaker had ever been able to achieve, resulting in a cleaner, more precise sound, which is no doubt why so many recording studios adopted it the world over, the most famous being EMI Abbey Road. Quad ESL 57. 
Kwanzaa ESL57 was the first mass-produced consumer electrostatic speaker. Released in the late 50s, the ESL57 was originally a mono speaker. What made the 57 special was the fact that it introduced listeners to the type of sound unlike anything they had ever heard before because the quad lacked a traditional cabinet. So traits like resonance were basically non-existent, leaving listeners with a clear, vivid sonic picture as a result. While bass and dispersion were sometimes troublesome with early designs, the unique quad sound was no, just no doubt struck a chord in the industry, influencing new electrostatics to be developed not only by quad, but by new companies such as Martin Logan. Klipsch Heresy. Before you go getting upset at me for not having the Klipsch horn on this list, know that the Heresy was arguably the first center speaker ever offered to consumers. And this is a big deal because the Heresy predates surround sound or even home theater. In fact, Paul Klipsch had to do a bit of wizardry to create a center signal to even send to the first Heresy speakers that sat between a pair of larger Klipsch horns. Nevertheless, whether you want to give full credit to the Heresies or Klipsch for that matter, center speakers are now a fixture of commercial cinemas and home theaters the world over. Polk Audio RT20P. Now I went back and forth on which Polk innovation to include here because the brand is responsible for several firsts. While I initially wanted to call out Polk's SDA technology, I opted instead for the more unassuming RT20P tower speaker released in the mid 90s. According to Polk, and I was unable to find any claims to the contrary, the RT20P was the first consumer loudspeaker to feature a powered subwoofer. While this may seem like me, <laughs> you know, kind of development nowadays. Think about all of the speakers today that feature a built-in subwoofer, and it is quick to see just how game-changing this new approach to speaker design truly was. Sony HT-A9. The Sony HT-A9 speaker system, not unlike Bose of the past, is revolutionary in that in some way, it combines all of the different technologies and designs covered in this list into one system. It is a powered speaker system that not only can tune itself to virtually any room, but isn't beholden to a traditional placement or even number of channels, creating the sensation of a full 9 to 12 channel Atmos setup from only four speakers. In my 20 years of covering home audio products as a profession, I have had my fair share of wow moments, but the A9 ranks towards the top because prior to its arrival, I had never seen or heard anything quite like it. Tannoy's Dual Concentric Speaker. Tannoy's Dual Concentric Speakers make this list because they have arguably made a specific driver layout so popular that you can see it in use with other brands to this day. It may be argued that Tannoy didn't invent the concept of placing a driver, often a tweeter, inside another larger driver, but they definitely perfected it, resulting in a sound that enthusiasts are still gaga for all these years later. So that's it. That is my top 10 game changing speakers of all time. And before you light me on fire in the comments, I don't suppose you, I missed one. I couldn't have missed one. Well, now it's my turn to be the people in the comments because I can't believe you left this off your list. Oh God. What'd uh, I leave off? Okay. In 1998, before you even graduated from high school, Alltech mm. Lansing introduced the very first ever soundbar no kidding called the voice of the digital theater or the <laughs> ada 106 which is a truly terrible name <laughs> the voice of the digital theater yeah i could almost see them hiring like that guy what was it pre uh forget his name the the trailer guy you oh know? yeah it's the voice of the digital theater <laughs> Coming to ruin your lives. <laughs> Watch out, audiophiles. <laughs> it's a sound bar. <laughs> oh my gosh. Launched in 1998, but coming home to roost in 20 years, the sound bar. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Here to make your lives absolutely miserable. <laughs> Some oh kid named Andrew's gonna make a YouTube channel and force <laughs> these down your throat. <laughs> Anyway, oh, yeah. anyway, Alltech Lansing came out with the soundbar, which was a multi-channel device that offered stereo, Dolby Pro Logic, and AC3 surround sound, and, inc mm. and included a separate subwoofer. 
Okay. The soundbar housed four three-inch full-range drivers and mm. two one-inch tweeters, okay. while the subwoofer used one eight-inch dual-voice coil driver. Wow. Altec Lansing side firing technology provided surround sound from the sides, rear, and front, eliminating the need of those pesky wiring and all the separate speakers, and as well as all the space they would require. Ho- okay, hold up a minute. So you're saying in 1998, Altec Lansing's soundbar, first ever soundbar, used reflecting sound technology to bounce sound off the sidewalls, and here we are, I think like 2022, call it 2021, there's... There's companies trying to say, like, we we do Atmos now without, you know, like it's new? I guess so. So are sound bars like 3D, like what 3D is to movies where every 10, 15 years we just like... Rename it. Rename it or rediscover it and be like, oh my God. <laughs> I mean, maybe so. I mean... <laughs> I don't really recall this particular soundbar back I, in the n- late 90s. I have no idea what product you're talking about. Um, but it's a real thing. Yeah, I, I believe you. You clearly dove in and f- found all oh, of the yeah. specs. Wikipedia, babe. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think to include a, I didn't think to include I a soundbar. I don't know bar. how you'd miss that one. It seems pretty damn obvious. <laughs> uh, to me, this has to be one of the biggest evolutions to home audio. Sure. And is the genre that continues, in my opinion, to be the most innovative and the one bringing more people to the hobby. I know audiophiles hate it with a passion. Well, some, not all of them, but some the are majority, coming around. You know, you know, the, you know the who people you are. that will call themselves audiophiles, <laughs> they hate this. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I feel like if you fast forward to today, mm-hmm. you have products like the Sennheiser Ambio, which oh, proves yeah. that you don't need huge speakers or external components to get killer sound. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, I think a lot of audiophiles like to hate on them, but we've seen some converts yeah. in our comments. Yeah. And I mean, I think slowly, but but I, surely we are... We are all converting you to drink our Kool-Aid. Changing hearts and minds. Yeah, one one <laughs> review at a time. Anyway. Anyway. You feel better? <laughs> She's got a pretty smug little, a little smile bit. on her face. A little bit. All right. Well, there you have it. Now it's your turn. Now it's your turn. That was our, <laughs> our top 10, 11, 12, 13 game-changing speakers of all time. I know we're right. But if you disagree, politely leave your <laughs> list down below. And what in what do you think it makes that a game changing for, for you? You or the history of hi fi or audio files, whatever. Yeah. Let's see how many lists we can get going. Politely. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Uh, go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. A couple of uh, subscribers have let us know that for some reason they are not being notified or they're not noticing when we publish. We publish every Thursday and Sunday, but if you turn on notifications, you're going to be notified. So you might want to do that. Uh, if you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you've continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us, thank you all very, very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that is it for us today. First video of 2023 in the books. Can you believe it? It's already a new year. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Happy New Year. Let's have some fun. And we'll see you on the next video.